Um, I think I think we can <coughs> we can just start. Um, probably we are like around uh, ten guys. Before I hand over to Eunice and Brian, if uh, you don't know any other person around this in in this, um, I think we are like ten. So a quick intro can help. Okay, on am too many out doing. I'm a no familiar. Unida di introduce a lafu seme naona di na flani ebu fungu aro di di tambulisha. Just a quick a quick intro. My name is Ayu, and today I won't be hosting you guys. It's going to be Eunice and Brian. So as we wait for others to join, if at all we'll have any other person. I think uh, instead of leaving it open, let's just do the way we normally do it. Uh, Timo Tanzanawewe, just a quick intro. Timo. Oh, yes, hello. Hey. Yes, I'm Timo, I'm also part of this group, yeah. All right. Brian, you're next. Hello, hello guys. Hi. Uh, okay, so my name is Brian, Brian Chair. Um, I'm currently working as a support and data analyst with Ona. Ona is a software company that deals with providing data solutions. And I did statistics and programming from KU. Yeah, that's pretty much about me. Karibu sana, Brian. Thank you. Uh, the next person is uh, Caroline. Uh, before I hand over to Eunice, Eunice and Brian will take us through NLP today, or rather this evening. Um, for those guys who are joining for the first time, we normally do this every Wednesday between 6 and 8, and 8 p.m. And uh, that is for NLP. And then uh, on Saturdays, if there is uh, a program, we normally run classes from uh, the first class from eight, around nine, nine to around midday, depending on the program that we share on WhatsApp group. Uh, at times I have uh, sessions in the afternoon, but most of the time I don't, I don't get it, but uh, based on the WhatsApp group, you, you guys get to be updated. So the objective of these sessions are normally to engage in our own personal studies and ever uh, work experience. We come across so many ways of resolving the same problem or so many ways of, of resolving different problems. So when we meet the way we are meeting, it's, um, it's time to share and uh, time to learn from each other. And also, if you're experiencing uh, a difficulty, I think this is the best forum where we can just freely share and build, build on our skills. Uh, data science, machine learning is a very, very expansive uh, uh, subject or rather uh, um, field. It's a very, very expansive field. and uh, one thing that I always keep close to my heart is what I was told a while back by one of my lecturers. Data science is a, is a sports, it's a, it's a sports uh, uh, field. You can't, you can't learn by yourself. You can't. And you, even when you're working, you can't work by yourself. And uh, forums like this are very, very important. So before I get into the time for Eunice and Brian's time, I think uh, Eunice and Brian uh, have very, very good stuff to show us. Um, NLP analytics and visualization. And uh, I wouldn't want to dwell much into it. Uh, I believe uh, they're ready. Eunice, you, I skipped you intentionally, so you might want to just introduce yourself and then I'm giving you host control so you can take over from uh, this point. It's all on you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Ayub. I really appreciate this plan. The chance to uh, to be in this platform. Actually, I really appreciate myself and Chaya. We really do appreciate. And uh, not wasting time, we'll just get right into it. Uh, we are talking about we are doing NLP today. And some of the applications of NLP are sentiment classification, topic extraction, translations, autocomplete, chatbots, 
question and answering and speech to text and many other. So what we are going to look at today is specifically sentiment analysis. So uh, uh, for those who, who are newbies in uh, NLP, I will just tackle even the most common thing so that you may, you may keep a record of what we have talked about. So what is sentiment analysis? This is contextual mining of text, which identifies and extracts subjective information in the source material. So when we are doing sentiment analysis, we get to know whether the sentiment is positive, negative, or neutral. Oh, I'm very sorry I did not introduce myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's allowed. But remember to share your screen. I I, I don't know if you, you had prepared the a slide or two. Okay, so what are we are just going to use the notebook. we're just going to use the notebook. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So as I share the notebook. You can introduce okay. yourself. Yeah, I can introduce. So my name is Eunice Mutahi and I am a data I'm an associate in data management at Evidence Action. So I basically do data management and data analysis. So, and um, during my free time, I do machine learning and data science so that I am up to date with what's happening. So I, I joined, how we got to know each other, how I got to, the plat to this platform is through the Nairobi Women in Data Science and Machine Learning group that I joined five years ago. So uh, I I also wish some of you would join the group. I think Ayub, Ayub can talk about the group later on. Yeah, and so today, myself and Brian, Brian has already introduced himself. So we're going to take you through some visualization that you should do before you start your sentiment analysis. So I'll uh, get uh, before before we start importing the necessary libraries that Brian will take us through. Just a little bit of introduction in uh, sentiment analysis. As I was saying, sentiment analysis is the contextual mining of text, which identifies and extracts subjective information in the source material that you're using. So the the, the uh, sentiment analysis help us know whether the sentiment is positive, negative or neutral. So a use case for sentiment analysis is, is to improve customer satisfaction in a company. You can know, you can know what, um, what words have been used to describe the, the, the organization. You can know whether it's positive, negative, and you can act on, on that to improve the customer satisfaction. Also, you can control reputation by doing reputation management, where you can monitor conversations around your brand in real time. So this helps you concentrate on the negative statements to, to just protect your brand's reputation. Okay, so, um, so I'll just let Brian uh, talk about the introduction take the introductory part of this uh, notebook. So Brian, are you there? Sorry, I was on mute. So yeah, here I am now. <laughs> okay, so uh, from what Eunice has said, uh, this is like uh, an introductory part of it. So I think You'll agree, most of you will agree with me that before doing any kind of modeling, it is perceived that 90% of the time is spent in data preparation. And that is sort of, that is the backbone. If you want to have like the best model out there, your data should be in a good state. So you really need to understand the data and you really need to get to know your variables correctly check out all the unwanted things and clean your data effectively. And this happens when you get to do some of your visualizations, which will help you understand how your data is. So to jump into a notebook, like the first cell here, we'll just be importing the, the libraries we are going to use some as regex, string, numpy, plotly, seaborn, matplotlib, and pandas, and ltk. These ones 
are going to be used in the visualizations and some of the analysis that is going to be done and some some like spacey and nltk those ones will be used when we'll be doing the modeling part yeah and so after importing our libraries we need to load in the data and this might be different depends with where your data is so like for a notebook here this is on collab so our data is an is in a google drive so we mount we mount our data then we now want to see the shape of our data so we look at the shape of our training data at the same time look at the shape of our testing data so we can observe that we have 27,481 tweets and that is in the training set and 3,534 in our in our test data so then we go to the inform the info to get more information about our data so from here we can see that the text id has one more value like it has 2741 records while the text and the selected test has less by one so we need to we have so from there we can understand that we have null values in our training data and there are different ways of dealing with null values it depends with the amount of null values you have and in which fields or in which columns you have the null values. So if you have a field that has, let's say like 50% of the entries in that field is null, I don't think you'll use that column. So you might as well go ahead and discard the whole column. But if, for instance, you're using, uh, you have your, your columns are numeric, so you might end up filling the nulls with uh, probably the median or the mean most some people pref prefer the mean others the median so it depends with what you want or the kind of analysis you want to do and if you have a small number of null values like for our case you only have one so we can just drop that null value so that is what the next cell does so we'll drop the null in place two, that means we are replacing the the data frame. So we check again our data and we see that we don't have any null values now. So then we go ahead and look at the head, that is the first 50, the first five records of our data. So at least we can now have a feel of our data, how it looks like. We can observe that we have four, four columns, a text and a selected text. Then we have our target column, which is the sentiment. Then we go down to look at the descriptive, the descriptive stats of our data. So you can understand now this is like, a, this is string, so if it were numeric we will have information about the mean the median the percentiles and the other ones but because because this is not numeric data we we'll, we are just interested in the count the number of unique values the top record and the frequency yeah so then now we want to understand the distribution of our data in terms of the sentiments so our data we understand is that we have the positive the negative and the neutral sentiment so we want to count and see out of our records how many are in the neutral category how many are in the positive category and how many are in the negative category so knowing the proportionality uh, enables us to see if really we can use this data in modeling because if you have a lot of data in the positive sentiment and just a few in the negative sentiment or in the other groups uh, it introduces some bias so the data will not be proportionate so 
checking the distribution or how our data is in the different sentiments is a good is a good skill to apply here so we have the numbers but let's see how visually how they look visually because i think graphs and images tend to catch attention easier than when you're looking at numbers so from our nice chart here you can see that the neutral the neutral bar is really high as compared to then followed by the positive then the neutral but you can see there's not much difference because the bars are of almost the same height depends with your eyes some people might see it with different so to get to better see it clearly we construct a funnel chart and this funnel chart you're going to see the distribution in terms of percentage so we can see the funnel chart so looking at the top we have 40 percent of our data 40.5 percent of our data is in the neutral the neutral sentiment then 31.2 percent represents the positive sentiment then 28.3 percent represents the negative sentiment so from this quick one from this quick intro you can see we understand the data clear and we know that uh we have like because we are mostly concentrating on the positive and negative you can see there's no bias or this data is data we can work with so the distribution is okay so i think uh Eunice will now go to the next part of the presentation uh, thank you brian for that brief introduction so uh we head right into what do we know about the data <clears throat> what do we know about the data after looking at it visualizing what do we currently know about the data first we know that selected text as as one of the columns is a subset of text because we've picked a set uh, we've picked some of the text in the in the in the text to form the selected text so we know that selected text contains contains only one segment of text i.e that is it does not jump between two sentences it's only in one sentence so for example if if our text is spent the entire morning in a meeting with a vendor and my boss was not happy with them lots of fun i had other plans for my morning then the selected text can be my boss was not happy with them lots of fun or lots of fun but it cannot be morning vendor and my boss then we know that neutral tweets have a jacket similarity of 97 percent between text and selected text text for those who don't know about the jacquard score we will talk about it later in our notebook so just just hold on to this thought that neutral tweets have a jacket similarity of 97 percent it's almost 100 percent between text and the selected text also as discussed here we have a link here as we share our notebook maybe you can we will have links here that we have used when developing this notebook so that you can at least have a reference point to understand more about what we are doing. So, okay, there are rows where selected text starts from between the words and thus selected text doesn't always make sense. And since we do not know whether the output of the test set contain these discrepancies or not, we are not sure that pre-processing and removing punctuations would be a good idea or not. So we are not sure about this because some texts might begin at the beginning, some at the end. So we are going to perform EDA on our, on our trained data to see better what, what the data has, what uh, more, to see better more of what we have not yet seen in our visualization up there when we, we were checking out the data set. So first of all, when we are starting to perform the EDA, we have to generate our meta features. So, so uh, some of these features, one would be the difference in number of words of selected text and text. Another one would be the jacket similarity scores between text and selected text. So we are going to, to generate this these two these two columns or variables in our data in our trained data so first of all we are gener we are using uh, we are generating our jacket score by using the function jacket 
which takes into parameters. So we know that we have we should have uh, we should have the first string and the second string. So this is where we we define our function. And also one more thing to note is that the Jacquard score is the is the uh, is the union the intersection divided by the union between two between two texts. So the the intersection between the two texts and then divided by the the union between the two texts. Te texts. So we come here. Uh, we have the Jacquard score here for sentence one and sentence two. So what we do here, we uh, we want to to produce the Jacquard score on the text and selected text. So as you can see here, we have for the sentences, and then we are we have two we have two variables, three actually three that we want to create. One is the number of words in the selected text, and then another one is the number of words in the text, and then the difference in words. So we can see number of words in, in the selected text, number of words in the main text, and the difference in the number of words between the text and the selected text. So we can see the we can see the, the variables here. They've been created, the three. So for in for instance, for the first case, we can check. We see in the text, we have I'd, I'd have responded if I were going. And then the, the selected text is I'd have responded if I were going to the same. So we can see the sentiment is neutral. And then the jacket score is one. This is because the selected text and the text are the same. That's why it's one. So the number of words that have counted and then number of words in the text is seven. So the difference in number of words is zero. Let's, let's check at this negative one. So we can see the text was, what interview? Leave me alone. So the selected text is leave me alone, which is negative, And it has a jacket score of 0 0.60. And then we can see the, the differences in the number of words. So the closer, the closer the jacket score is to one, the closer it is to one, then it means the text and the selected text are almost the same. So let's look at the distribution of these, these three meta features that we have created. So we have, um, we want to create a distribution plot of the number of words. So as you can see, this plot here shows the distribution number of words. So the, the blue one is the selected text and the orange one is the text. So as we can see from this figure, we can see that the selected, selected text is, uh, has fewer number of words. That's why it's here. And then we can see the rest of the distribution as the number of words increases. This is now the actual text before removing the selected, before subsetting the selected text. And we can see as we tend to 25, as we tend to pass 25, then we have lesser words, lesser words, lesser text that have more words. So this is basically the distribution that we can see there. And then also what we can get from this is that the distribution in number of words is skewed to the right. You can see our, our, our is it plot? Uh, our plot is skewed to the right. Okay, our distribution, so distribution plot. And then we also want to plot, we want to plot a candle distribution plot for the number of words. We've already checked for the, for the jacket score for the distribution, and now we want to check for the number of words. So we can see the number of words in selected text and number of words in text both in distinct colors. So we can see our plot is also skewed to the right, and we can see there's a difference in the distribution in number of words. So number of words in the text are many. You can see they're they are heading to 35, but the number of words in text, they're fewer, fewer compared to, to the number of words in the text. Yeah, so it will be now more interesting to see the difference in number of words and jacket scores across the different sentiments. Because here we have not considered the sentiment, we've just checked for the distribution of number of words regardless of the sentiment. So here we want to check the different in number of words for the positive and the negative, as you can see. So uh, we can see this distribution plot, the way it looks. 
So we can see the, the, uh, the number of words in the distribution of number of words in the positive sentiment and the negative sentiment is almost the same as you can see our plot here. And then there's, okay, we can just say there's no major difference between the number of words in negative and positive sentiments. Also, let's check for the neutral sentiment, the distribution in number of words. So we can see, we can see just uh, uh, just one and it's very much skewed to the, to the right, difference of words. This is because, as we said earlier, for the neutral sentiment, the number of words in the selected text and the number of words in the text are always almost the same. So we did not plot a KDE plot, the kernel distribution uh, plot for the neutral tweets because most of the values for the difference in numbers of words were zero. Since selected text, if there are seven and then text are seven, then the difference in number of words is zero. So we can see it clearly now if we had use the feature in the starting, we would have known that text and selected text are mostly the same for neutral tweets. That it's always important to keep the end goal in mind while performing EDA. So as we are performing, performing our EDA, we, we had to note that our major, our major concern is, is, is in the positive and the negative sentiment. So there's no need of dwelling on the neutral sentiment because we won't get much, much out of the plots. Yeah. So also, uh, let's now check on the, the distribution plot for the jacquard scores across the different sentiments. We've checked for the difference in number of words, now let's check for the jacquard scores. So we can see jacquard scores, uh, distribution of uh, jacquard scores across the positive and the negative sentiment are like this. So we can see there's, a, there's kurtosis on both ends this end and this end, uh, which shows that uh, which shows that the different the jacket scores some some of the words were almost the same almost the same here the number of words were almost the same and also at some point or here at one you can see at one we said a jacket score of one shows that what is in the selected text and what is in is in the text is almost the same. And we can see here, we have a jacket score of between 0, 0.0 and 0 0.2, meaning that the number of words is very different between the selected and the, and the actual text. Yeah, so we were not able to, to plot a KDE of jacket scores for the neutral tweets for the same reason that I said before, that the, that the selected text and the text are, are always almost the same. Yeah, so next, can see we can actually see the uh, jacket score distribution of the neutral tweets you can just see it's one okay there are others that are less than one but between 0 0.8 which is almost close to one yeah and that proves our point okay now let's see the interesting there's some interesting trends that we see here one is that the positive and negative tweets have a high kurtosis and thus values are concentrated in two regions the narrow and the high density. Then neutral tweets have a low kurtosis value and, they, and there is a bump in density near values of one due to the same reason that I said before. So what this is explaining is, uh, is this plot, this plot that we have here. We have a kurtosis at the high density and at the low density. So for those who don't remember what kurtosis meant, Kurtosis is the measure of how picked a distribution is, how picked it is, and how much spread it is around, around the peak. Then skewness measures how much a curve deviates from a normal distribution. That's why our curves were mostly uh, skewed to the right. Then we have some conclusions that we will make out of the EDA that we have performed. So one is that we can see from the jacket score plot that there is a peak for negative and positive plots around score of one. That means there's a cluster of tweets where there is a high similarity between text and the selected text. Then if we can find those clusters, then we can predict text for selected text for those tweets irrespective of the segment here. Yeah? And then what this talks about also the same plot, we are coming back to the same, same plot here. 
there, there are some there are some tweets that are that have that have a jacket of one because the selected text and the and the text are almost the same. Yeah. Then another thing that we would want to look at is if we can find then if you can find these clusters we would want to check the tweets which have a number of words less than three in text because there's there the text might be completely used as text so if the text if the the fewer what what you would get from this eda is that the fewer the number of words in the text the more this the um the higher the higher the chances of having it as the selected text then that means at the end of the day we will have our text and selected text with the same number of words okay so uh brian could you kindly proceed with uh, where we are subsetting our data to have to have the text to have the selected text that have words that are lesser than uh, than two less or equal to two kindly <coughs> okay thank you Eunice, for the wonderful job you've done. So at least now we understand the distribution of our data. We can see that uh, if we have this data where we have like short tweets or short same text, there is high chance of having the, same, the text and the selected text being the same. And this will now increase our jacket scope. So we want now to we want to subset our data using the number of words, the number of words in the text to only get the ones that have uh, that are less or equal to two. That is less or equal to two. Then we want to find the mean of the jacket the jacket score and group it by the sentiment. So from that result, we get that the negative sentiment has a jacket mean score of 0 0.78. The neutral one is 0 0.9, which is close to one. And the positive one has a mean jacket score of 0 0.765. So let's have a look at the data where the sentiment is positive. And from what we can see here is that now we have the text and the selected text having almost the same word, like chilling, chilling, thank you, thank you, good morning, hug. So we can see that the number of words in the selected text and the number of words in the text is almost the same. Therefore, the difference in the number of words is zero and the jacket score is one. So that's it's it's clear that most of the time the text and the selected text is the same so we can improve this by preprocessing the text which had word length less than 3 so this one will come in handy when we were when we are building the model so now what we want to do is uh, we want now to clean our text we we're going to perform some cleaning and we're going to use regex so python has this library regex that help us to clean our text so what we do here is we want to define a function that is going to remove all these unwanted characters from from our text what we're going to do is we're going to replace those ones with empty spaces not not empty spaces but empty strings so we define the patterns that we want to check for the first step we're going to convert it into lower then remove the square brackets the links the punctuations and then the, remove the words that contain numbers so this is a lot of regex patterns so we, we create a function called clean text so then now we apply this to our text column and the selected column so now if we preview our our clean data frame, we can see that those asterisks, those uh, punctuation marks have now been removed and now we have clean data that doesn't have those punctuations. Okay, then we now move to common words in our target selected text. 
So we want to count, find the count of the common words in our selected text. So we want us to see like the common, the top 20 most common words. And we have things like I, to, the, uh, my, yeah. So if you see, these are words that really can't help us do anything because I can't tell what, what sentiment to has, or I can't read any sentiment from the word to, or from the word and these conjunctions, and I don't know how they were called, prepositions can't really help us. So let's visualize this data. Uh, so we want to find a bar plot, a horizontal bar plot that is going to show us the distribution of this work. So we can see we have the I2, which which have high, that they're appearing most of the time in our text. Let's move down. So these words that we've been talking about, the as and the two, these are stop words in natural language processing. So this is useless data that we cannot use. So most of the search engines, if you, if they, they, they ignore it, so they're not considered as important when you want to, in any of the natural language processing that you're going to do. So next we're going to use this cool library called NLTK to remove these stop words. So we define a function that is going to check, to check for the words. If the word is not in the stop word, then it's going to return the word. If it's in the stop word, then we are going to ignore it. So now we want now to show the, the, now, the common words now without the stop words now. So we have good, day, love, happy, like. So these are words that we can use now to to read our 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 sentiments. Let's yeah. So we want now to visualize because you remember earlier we stated that uh, seeing these words in a chart is better than looking at them when they are just lined up there. So this is a tree map showing the words, the count of common words. This one is uh, a chart, not, this one still includes the stop words that we just removed. So let's move to the next one. Yeah, so, oops, okay. I think here it's the same. We, we are removing the stop words and showing the, number of common words, the count of number of common words after removing the stop words. So this is the same, now showing or plotting the horizontal back graph of the common, the common words. Now these ones don't have the stop words. We can see days appearing most compared, followed by good, then get, then like, and so on. Yeah, so from this figure of the text and the previous of the selected one, we now see the common words are almost the same, which is unsurprising. Oh, I was a bit confused. So the, the top one was uh, the number of common words in the text. And the, the other one is the number of common words in the selected text. So we can see that the number of common words in the text and the number of common words in the selected text is almost the same, yeah. So we want now to check for the number of common words in different sentiments. So what we were showing previously was the general number or the number of words, the common words, regardless of the sentiment. So now we want to subset our data and have like the positive sentiment, the negative sentiment, and the neutral sentiment. So we want now to see the most common, 
positive words. So these are most common positive words attached to the positive sentiment. So we can see good appears most of the time, then happy, then love, day, thanks. You can see all these are positive words, probably congratulatory messages or appreciative messages or messages people treated when they were happy. So we are going to plot a bar graph of the same to just visually present this information and we can see good, happy appear most of the time. Yeah. Uh, now we want to see the most common negative words. These are words we don't really like. So we can see miss, miss is a, it's a negative word here, but I know some people will, if you put it in context, maybe miss will not be a negative word. <laughs> Probably you're missing someone. So if you contextualize it, it might change the sentiment here. But anyway, we see it here. So here it was assigned a, a negative sentiment, then sad, sorry, bad, head. Okay. So let's now show this in a, in a tree map so that we can see the distribution clearly. So we can visually see that these are the words and Ms has a big square, meaning it appears most of the time, followed by sorry, then sad and bad, then the others. Yeah, then we now look at the most common words, the most common neutral words. This doesn't show any affiliation towards the positive or negative side. On the number like this one will be at zero there, neither the negative or the positive side. So it gets go, day, don't, good, words, yeah. So we can see, we can also now see it visually on a trim up here. Yeah. yeah, we can see words like get, go, don't, are common words in all the three segments. That's interesting because words like don't and can't are more of negative, neutral, and words like lol are more of positive nature. Does this mean our data is incorrectly labeled? We will have more insights on this after n-gram analysis. It will be interesting to see the words, to see uh, the word unique to different segments. So I think the next step is now looking at the unique words per segment, which uh, Eunice is going to take us through that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, so Brian has taken us through the common words, uh, per, regardless of the sentiment, and then the common words per the, per sentiment. So now we are going to look at unique words in this order. So we, we're going to look at unique words in the positive sentiment, unique words in the negative, and then unique words in the neutral sentiment. So first of all, uh, we want to define our, we want to define uh, our function that finds the unique words in the sentiment. It has those parameters. So after defining it, now we use it here in the positive tweets. So we want to see the top 20 unique words in the positive tweets, which are the following. So we have congratulations, which has the highest frequency. We have thanks, appreciated, shared, and we can just view this in a tree map. <clears throat> so you can see congratulations take the biggest, uh, the biggest, what is it called? Yeah. It has the highest fre frequency and then the rest twin mint yeah so we've seen that in the positive tweets then also a trip as you're doing visualization one one um one way of which i mean one plot is not enough you can just use multiple plots to just see your data better and so we decided to use a donut plot also so here is a donut plot of our unique words in the positive sentiment, we can see congratulations, honored, coolest. Yeah, so we move next to our negative tweets. We can see in our negative tweets, we have ache, suffering, 
sardes, and we use a gradient here that that peaks as the gradient. Um, what is it called? It goes on in a in a dilute as the counts go lower. Yeah, so we want to also see a donut plot of the negative tweets, the negative words, so we can see it clearly. It actually looks so cute, yeah. And then we go to the neutral words. So the neutral words, we have settings explain these are, you can't even know whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing, a negative word, yeah. And then we look at the donut plot. This is how it looks. Yeah, at least we understand our words more better. Better. So by looking at the unique words of each sentiment, we, en we now have much more clarity about the data. These unique words are very strong determinants of sentiment of the sentiment of tweets. So now we head straight into word clouds. So word clouds are just pick the words and uh, put them in a shape that you can actually see the most common words. So we, we will be having, we will be looking at word clouds for the neutral tweets, word cloud for the positive and, the, and for the negative tweets. So um, we have our images for the word clouds that we had to import in, we have to, we had to import in our, we had to save them in our Google Drive. And then now this is where we define our function for plotting the word cloud. So we start with the negative, we start with the neutral tweets, tweet, sorry. So we can see the mask that we've used here, we've used the upvote. The upvote is the one that has a thumbs up. So you can see how the words are distributed. And this is the thumbs up figure. Yeah. So we can see that, yeah, that's called a word cloud. And then we have a word cloud for the positive tweets. So here we use the star, we use the star. So we can see we have enjoy, really, hey, hey, that, love. This is for the positive tweets. And then we change the shape again. Oh my God, <laughs> my internet. So let me see, no internet. So here I'm we have a local. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. but <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So here I'm supposed to have a plot here of uh, I've used a lock, so it it should be round, should show these words for the for the oh, I mean the neutral yeah, sorry I mean the negative the negative tweets. So I should see the negative words in a circle. So that's what my log.png, that, that was the shape of my PNG. Yeah, and then now we decided that we will dive into, uh, into the train data today and visualize it and get ready for everything so that the next time we proceed with the session, we will start on modeling. I won't even scroll down so that you see the model and stuff. So yeah, Brian, you have anything to add? Uh, okay, so yeah, basically, for as stated earlier, our presentation today was majorly focused on understanding the data and getting to know our data better, so which is the most important part. So, currently, at least, we've cleaned our data, we know how our data looks like, we know the distribution of our data. So, when moving forward to the model or now trying to predict uh, new tweets into the different uh, sentiments, we have a better understanding of our data. And that is something that we're going to do next. We are thinking of using the NER. So I think that is something that we will do. Then probably if we get another chance to present in this forum, we will really appreciate after that. And there was a question here, I think from Martin, he yeah. asked, how is the selected text created? So this is data we got from Kaggle. So I will say the data was, was already provided. So 
I wouldn't lie to you that we know how the selected text was extracted from the text. So, but moving forward, uh, moving forward is to to get the data directly from an API, from the Twitter API, so that we can get data from probably analyze the mood of people from a certain hashtag. I know the Twitter API is well formatted, so it's really to get that data. So I think that is where that is where we are we are heading to, like getting data directly from the API rather than having data loaded to by or from CSVs. Thank you, Brian. Um, Ayub, I, can I hand it over to you now? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. I'm just amazed by your visualization. You guys, your visualization are just awesome. Uh, before I continue, there is a question from Martin as well. Um, what is the main goal of modeling? Or I mean, why is the model? Uh, Martin, would you just uh, rephrase your question? Hi, I'm Martin, uh, who is a girl, eh? um, <laughs> Hi, Martin, sorry, who is a I'm girl? In, yeah, I'm logged in with someone else's account, I'm sorry. Oh, um, okay. Just wanted to know, uh, what is the charge or about? Is it um, um, modeling as a final goal and so you chose to start with EDA or is it EDA only? And if you're modeling, what are you interested in? Like, what do you want to get out of the model? Hi, oh, Jen. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Brian. How oh, did you know? You know my voice. <laughs> Long time. The sound, the voice, or rather. So, Jen um, is Martin. Anyway, I think um, yeah. <laughs> Eunice, will, Eunice will respond to that. <laughs> Okay, hi, hi, Martin, or is it Jane? So, <laughs> okay, fine, yeah, you can call me whichever. <laughs> okay, fine. So, our goal here, okay, we joined the competition, of course, we were not sure about it, and we uh, we really wanted to do something on NPA and NLP. So, Good. the major our major goal first is to visualize our trained data, that's why we've used EDA to just check our data and have it in place and know what are we dealing with. And then what we, what we are aiming at is having a model that when we have a tweet, it can pick the selected text and tell us whether it's positive, the sentiment is positive, negative, or neutral. Mm, that's interesting. In fact, um, there was a guy we had some talk with sometimes, I think last year, and they wanted to um, do a project that will automatically identify uh, child abusive content, that mm -hmm. is text. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think it has a wide application uh, when it comes to um, the various kind of societal problems that we are facing. Mm -hmm. And it's something that uh, I think NGOs were looking into funding yeah, NLP has a lot of money. <laughs> so if you are able to identify like child abusive content or uh, these people who, um, do we call the, them pedophiles? These people who can hear children mm. eh? <laughs> online. If you're able to identify those things and alert the system so that it is pulled down, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. So you guys keep it up. I'm so amazed by this, and I hope that also, I will also start doing NLP. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are looking forward to finish it and be able to, to know the sentiments uh, as we connect to the Twitter API directly and get the data real time. So yeah. also what you've talked about is, is actually a very useful use case of this uh, sentiment analysis. And yeah, and actually you can also try, try and maybe start and we can walk this journey together. <laughs> cool, cool. I'm honored. <laughs> Thanks. Okay.
All right. Uh, that was really, really cool. Uh, is there anyone with a question? I, I would just want to put uh, a few things into context. Anyone with a question for Eunice and, and, and uh, Brian? Uh, other question? Yes, yes, go ahead. So I wanted to know, because uh, I've seen some steps for people using on uh, NLP where you data, then you tokenize the words, you remove stop words, you do n-gram, trigram. I want to know the, like what the need of doing n-gram and trigram first. Then I'll, I want to suggest can, next time, can we maybe take a look from like a project where we collect data from a document, we analyze the data, we we like we look for topics in that particular document, then we look for keywords in each specific topic in the keywords in each topic in the document. Yeah, but it was really a good presentation. Yeah, that's what my I just want to know the why do we need to do n gram and three gram in NLP? Thank you. Eunice Brian, who will pick that up? So I, I think uh, what I would say is uh, that is that that part is reserved at the moment. I think we will talk about all that when we finally do the model. This was just like introductory yes, or yeah, getting to understand the data. But okay. I think the next time we are doing the presentation. We will talk about tokenization, we'll talk about stemming and all those words you want to hear. This one, that, that is the second part of, of this. And I think it's, it's work in progress and we've already started. So next time, if we get a chance to present here again, we will have those answers for you. Absolutely. Also, also remember to mention uh, word embeddings. Um, I'm sorry, by the way, I'm just a beginner in NLP. <laughs> and I saw that they, they help to bring context. So I don't know if that is um, applicable here. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I just saw that somewhere. Just seeing, I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. I, I, I don't know if uh, it's something that uh, can help with uh, modeling. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe we have experts here who can mention one or two things. Yeah, yeah. I and think, then, um, like like Brian has mentioned, it's um it's a multi process. Um, it has several stages. The normal pipeline or the mo normal workflow of an NLP project would be uh, what uh, Brian and Eunice have done uh, as as the first stage. You really need to understand what text are are in your are in your data. Uh, this time you're looking at text analysis. You need to do um, to just get a feeling of what's inside your in, inside your data. Once you do that, the next one is now pre-processing that data to to a level where you you can start doing uh, modeling. Before you do that, you pre-processing involves things that have been mentioned in this. Um, in this meeting, things like uh, tokenization, stemming, and there are reasons why you have to do each of those uh, processes. Now, just before you do, just before you do, you start your modeling. Uh, the final stage of pre-processing is um, you need to convert now that text into integers. That is what Martin, who is a girl, is telling us: <laughs> it's, uh, what vector, what vectorization. So once yeah. you convert that text into integers, now you'll have a, a big matrix, um, a big matrix of integers that you can now push to modeling. And then modeling is just the, the way we've been doing it. Now, if I answer Mombali's question on, on n-grams, it's just a way of trying to understand what good combination of words uh, within your text um, uh, determine, determine uh, the output. For instance, because n-gram is you're splitting. If you if you if you pick two words uh, to split your words by two, so for instance, a statement like uh, let me read the uh, message from 
Martin to everyone. How is the selected text created? So if we if we read that statement uh, and then we choose a bigram, so the first bigram would be how is the second one is is there the, the next one is there selected the next one is selected text the next one is text created. So there are reasons why you just need to explore. Uh, these are techniques to help you understand more about your text, which is normally the first stage. And I'm super impressed by what you guys have done. The visualization is really, really cool. Um, Mumbali, um, I, think, I think we will stay, uh, I think Eunice and uh, Brian have done a very good thing in terms of uh, triggering the interest. So yeah. of course they'll be having continuous sessions. So Brian and uh, Eunice, you guys will take us through all the way to the end until we see the model and yeah. actually deploy it to production. And uh, as guys, we 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 solve it. So you guys just know that your space in this uh, in this forum is reserved. You will take us to the end. So prepare very well, uh, just the way you've done today. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, sure. That's really awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Any other person with a question for Brian and Eunice? I am here. Henry? Yeah. You, you um, question, I'd request. Yes, I have. So Go ahead. I'd, I'll request either Eunice or Brian. I'll request either Eunice or Brian to scroll to the top part where, where we are loading the data. Where we do the first five rows dot head. There? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I actually, my question would sort of uh, be a follow up of uh, Martin Jane's question. Uh, I'm, lo I'm, I'm looking at uh, our variables or rather our columns. That's text ID, text, selected text, sentiment. So um, I, uh, I feel like um, when we are pulling or scrapping the raw data that is from Twitter, I believe uh, it comes maybe in an unstructured format. So there could be some work to do to organize, to organize the, the data to, to this format. So I'm interested in specifically columns to me that already is at this point negative or positive. So does it mean that they were classified before you loaded the data or the data set itself had tweets that had been classified? So you got the data set and continued with it that way. Okay, to answer you, Henry, uh, this, this is the training data, the train data that was provided by Kaggle. So already they have provided you with the text, selected text and the sentiment. So this is what you're supposed to use when training your data as, as a trained data set. And then later on, you can, you can be able to come up with a model that can do this. Uh, I think oh, okay. to, to, to add to this question, you see, uh, when you start uh, streaming uh, Twitter data, it will come in as text. And you'll be building your, mo will you be building your model using text or selected text? That is the question. So if you're, you build using selected text, you have raw Twitter data, which is text. I will remove from text to selected text so that now you can predict. Um, that I'll, is I'll the that's a very good question. And I think I can see uh, uh, three guys have raised it, uh, Martin, uh, Henry, and uh, David. And uh, actually it, uh, it implies the difference between what you learn and what's on the ground. On the ground, things are very rough. And I think the question is coming in um, how you manage it, how, how, how it's converted. My understanding of, I've not explored this text, uh, this data set, 
But my understanding is <clears throat> the selected text column is uh, something that was picked uh, to, to assist or rather to help explain um, Jacquard similarity, what uh, Eunice has, has used. Uh, my thought is the raw text is I'd, I'd, I'd have responded if I were going. Huh? The column for uh, text is the raw text uh, with the HTML star commas, and that is how it is on when you when you start streaming. <clears throat> Assuming the selected text column is not there, yeah. So um, if if you train, you do cleaning on your text, yeah, and uh, build a model using uh, text that the text column that has been cleaned up. And then you deploy your model. Now, if you pick a text like I'd have responded if I were going, which is under selected text, and push this to your model, it should be able to do the prediction. So the way I'm understanding this data set is um, the text column is what I would call um, in sample data. The selected text column is what I would call out of sample. I stand corrected. I've not explored the, the data set, but that is the assumption. So you can, use, you can use the text column to build your model and then use the selected text column to test your model yeah, for, uh, for NLP, depending on what you've done. But it's, what is coming out is, uh, and what David had mentioned earlier, can we walk the journey the way it is on the ground? And I agree to that kind of suggestion. And the suggestion would be, can we scrap data about a certain conversation? Like uh, in, in Kenya, um, how many Kenyans talk about COVID in a day? Uh, can we scrap that data as it is, mm -hmm. open it, dump it in an Excel sheet, and the way it is in an Excel sheet, clean it up, and then clean, clean it up, and then um, you would say, do we have anything positive about COVID? We could tell, that would be just text analysis. Um, uh, looking at uh, probably the, the highest locations of uh, the conversation, COVID conversation. Another thing would be in a, in a, in a span of uh, the entire day, 24 hours, what hour of the day do people talk about COVID so much? Is it when there is news? Is it when, uh, when people just wake up in the morning or is it when they are going to evening? So those are some of the um, problems or rather um, scenarios we can use to learn, to learn how to walk through the entire process. Another, another, another use case um, besides what Martin has, has proposed in terms of, um, he had mentioned something kind of child abuse content. Mm -hmm. um, I am religious uh, and I, I couldn't think of any other example. Um, assuming you're going through some difficult problems or some difficult time and you, you, you don't read the Bible so often, so you don't even know the, the first book of the Bible. You don't even know the, the last book of the Bible, but you really need to read a, a verse in the Bible. All you know is what you're going through. So you'll be like, what can I do when I'm so broke? And then if, can you give, um, can, you, can you write that statement? And then um, uh, you get a response of the right quote from the Bible. Another scenario would be if, if, you, if you've been molested, if your child has been molested, you're just struggling, Where, what can you do? So there are so many, there are so many uh, scenarios of, of text processing. Um, and I believe uh, Eunice, you guys, I think uh, moving forward, you can take lead um, on, on, on NLP, of course, with my support. Uh, and identify, we take the sentiment analysis to closure from the beginning to end. We pick another one, text summarization from beginning to end. By the time we do um, analysis, classification, sentiment analysis, uh, text processing, text generation, all these things will look so normal. So I think uh, this, this has been a very, very good start. And all those ideas, we need to like uh, embrace them and see to light. Is it going to work on 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. Any other question? Uh an idea maybe yes, someone madam. can can also walk us through how to build a bot a chat bot uh, actually um i wanted to use what uh, you see what the, 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 some of us might be wondering um the essence of all this these are actually the core and fundamentals of nlp so when you're building up for instance a chat bot there are certain things that you need to take care of for instance i was taking notes uh, so for instance uh relation relation to what david had asked previously what is the purpose of engram um you had uh, you had units mentioned about ketosis you saw the 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 trim up the trim up visualization you saw the donut donut plot what, why are all these relevant um and why should we know them so you're mentioning, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about a, a chatbot. A chatbot basically is something you're, you're building to be able to understand what you, some context. So if you're building a, a chatbot that does customer service, basically answering frequently asked questions, this is a machine. If it is a human being answering those questions, they wouldn't have problems, but there are certain times that even human beings as guys we have problems a, a, a good example is um a fisherman went to the bank you're telling a story a fisherman went to the bank uh, do you mean the fisherman went to the river bank or to to cast the net or if people or to loop the wire to start fishing or uh, do you mean the fisherman went to the bank so there are some there are certain ambiguities that even to human beings require further clarification so the normal natural way of responding to that question would be which bank did the fisherman go to is it the bank uh, to withdraw money or what what did the fisherman go to do at the bank is it to withdraw money or to fish uh, or to do his fishing uh, so the same same um, natural way of conversation you should have it with your chatbot and for a chatbot you need to do and understand what all those things mean. Relations of words. Um, I would pick one example. Uh, for instance, the trim up. Uh, Eunice, could you scroll down to where the trim up is for the positive sentiment? Okay. Uh, well, no, no, no. yeah, there. Yeah. That one was for? Is this for positive? But we can we can still work with the, this is most common. Go to one of the sentiments. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is for yeah. Yeah. Negative yeah. words. Yeah, that is for negative words. So just from the trim up, you can actually tell that the word sorry, if it appears on your statement, it is most likely to be a negative sentiment. So if you're building a chatbot, for instance, uh, that is, uh, you wanted to deploy a chatbot that helps people in real estate, as an example, will the chatbot be able to in, insinuate that this is a house for rent and it's not a house for sale without seeing the word buy or sell in the text? You get so for instance i make a statement that i'm looking for a house in kilalesha and uh, uh, i have like around 700 uh, 7 million shillings i've not said it is for sale i've not said it's for rent yeah but a human being would say okay this is just for for buying so will the board understand that i'm looking for a house in kilalesha and my budget is 7 million shillings um, that is a house for sale as compared to someone else who said, I have a budget of 15,000 and I'm looking for a, a bed sitter in Kilalesha. So where does the secret lie? The secret lie in the relationship between those words and how often certain words appear. Uh, we've, we, today we've covered jacket similarity. So jacket similarity, it looks at, um, it's actually a mathematical formula. Uh, Eunice had mentioned it uh, previously. It's a proportion of uh, the common words versus the unique words. So if you look 
deeper and deeper into the statements. And in this case, statements being what is referred to as a, a document. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. It will give you um, a lot of inferences and the best way and the starting point for uh, any NLP task is visualization and understanding the text. So it's a very, very good thing. This has triggered all the interest. Yeah, sure. And if you miss a class or if you miss a session, you'll really, really miss a lot. Yeah, so um, uh, just to answer your question, Martin, you had asked about how to build a chatbot. It's a journey. There are different uh, chatbots that someone can build. Um, uh, just high level, uh, they are rule-based where you define certain rules and then it returns based on either the number of uh, the word that is available in a certain um, statement. It's uh, rule-based, keyword-based, uh, it looks at a certain, the presence or absence of a certain word or a certain phrase, and then it gives a return, yeah? And then there are, there are, there are chatbots that are based on uh, uh, probability. So uh, a probabilistic uh, formula is generated, and if a certain threshold is reached, it picks that as the answer. Um, there is re retrieval. Now, retrieval chatbots, I think that is what we will we will walk through in in as we move forward because once we do NLP um, sentiment analysis and then we we do which is just classification, yeah. we will be able to do a retrieval based chatbot. So the difference is retrieval based chatbot you build classifiers and based on the output from the classifier. Like right now, if uh, if uh, Eunice and, and Brian completes their model all the way, sentiment analysis, and we want to see, given you send a text to a certain chatbot, and you want the chatbot to, to detect whether or not that statement is positive or, or negative, whether or not the customer is happy or sad. So if, they if the customer is sad, the, the chatbot needs to reply with, it looks like you're having a bad day. Um, but I'm here to help you. I'm going to help you together with my colleagues. So the moment it detects that, you've, you've not told them that I'm mad or something, the board just dis discover that, okay, this one looks like I'm a jam. So I think uh, after we've done our classifiers, sentiment analysis, you guys will actually see how a retrieval based chatbot is done um, all the way to the end. So you guys stick around and keep the questions coming. You're on the right group. With, um, yeah. with the support from members like Eunice, Brian, uh, any, any other person who wants to, to, to teach us what they know, we will definitely learn a lot. So Martin, she clear hapo hapo. How many, Jen? Jen. Jen, Jen, she clear hapo hapo. Usibanduke kabisa? Sawa, sawa. Okay, any other question? All right. Um, so, uh, actually, no, uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm a person of many questions. Uh, o OCR is it uh, NLP or image processing or both? I think that one is image. Optical character recognition. It's it's recognizing characters. Okay. Yeah. So that is image. So like it can you it can go through a scanned uh page and re and return our document yeah. of the same. Yeah. Or you could you could you could even I, I think David Mombali is doing a very interesting project. Um number plate. Maybe one day he will talk about it. But uh I think uh, those are some of the technologies or techniques you can use to extract uh uh, certain characters from images. David, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, so basically OCR, what it does is, uh, it recognizes uh, objects. Yeah. Mumbai, you're breaking uh, up. Oh, sorry, I think it's... So, here, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, basically what it does is read characters on a, 
on an object. So it's written the characters which you you have on a particular object. So basically you can use maybe let's say a camera, take a photo of a particular object, let's say a number plate, then uh, use OCR to read the characters there on the number plate. Mm. So there's there's quite a lot. Um, there's there's quite a lot. It's 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 good for one to pick the path and be engaging. Yeah. Like I said in the WhatsApp group, uh, pick your path and be stubborn. Uh, ask questions. So Kama say Eunice is a member of that group. Kama kuna kitu jelewa, Eunice asilale. Umpate tu time ya usi kundi analala. Like in mchana, msumbwe kabisa. Be very stubborn. Yeah, that is the way you will get value. Yeah, true. Uh, uh, Ayub, I can see a question from Kimani Njogu say, asking, how about sentiments on COVID? So we can also check on sentiments on COVID. So this is something that you can check sentiments on any topic. So we are not constraining it to just checking whether a, a, a statement is negative or positive, but there are so many use cases of, of sentiment analysis. And so Kimani Njogu, that is possible. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I can also see Martin or Jane saying that uh, you want us to share the notebook. Yeah, we would really want to share the notebook, but as at the moment we are still working on it and we will upload bits by bit on our GitHub uh, account. So once it's ready, we'll just share the link so that you're able to, you're able to fork the notebook or download it. Yeah, I think that would be really good. Uh, considering some sessions, you normally do real-time coding side by side, where as you type, the, everyone else in the class types, that it would be really nice if you could just uh, uh, format it in a way that you can share, remove the parts that you, you've not finished so that people work with you. And then once you, you've done that, you can share in the, in the group for people to access and um, practice before the next class. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. And if possible, refactor the code, please. <laughs> it's not a very long function. <laughs> anyway, that is just, it's not necessary, but uh, it's a good coding practice. Um, refactoring, even writing software tests. Uh, I don't do that. But anyway, it is. Uh, basically, I, I think I had somebody mention that employers are also looking for people who can write clean code that can be put in the production environment and uh, also uh, people who know how to write tests for their code. Yeah, and I think there are courses on uh, how to write software tests for data science. Um, I've not uh, pursued them myself. Yeah, but it makes them look so professional and yeah, lit. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. But uh, it's not necessary. <laughs> uh, uh, also, I can see a question from Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she's asking miscommunication on COVID. Where will that lie? Uh, what do you think, uh, Ayub or Brian? Uh, I think. Miscommunication has something to do with like getting accurate um, uh, information uh, on uh, where either maybe the causes the cure or because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of information outside there. I'm not so sure what she must have meant, but if that is the case, then uh, this this would still lie on. I'm thinking of. A repo, a repository where uh, bots can actually plug in and provide answers. So, uh, and the answers needs to be from um, a legit source. For example, if you're talking about uh, COVID, uh, can we depend on the Ministry of, uh, of Health, for instance, no. uh, to give us reliable, <laughs> not, not from a Ayub, Yub's bot, because Ayub's bot could be biased, you see. I, I don't know, Rose, I don't know if um, maybe she could just rephrase that question because it's not clear what exactly she means. Um, can you hear me? Yes. 
No, I'm asking if you're doing NLP and you're working on maybe uh, misclassifying maybe the miscommunication which people are tweeting about on Twitter. How do you go about that one? What do you mean miscommunication? Give an example. Like the way people are miscommunicating that when you when you drink sanitizers, COVID will go away. Something like that. I think I think I think you can like uh, I think you can even come up with your own data and say um, and build a classification model, maybe even binary that says this is correct and this is not correct. You mm. can also you can put uh, example of fake text statements mm. and mm. real statements mm. and then your label will be cor uh, true false or false. correct incorrect yeah. or fake or not fake yeah. Yeah. and then you train your model yeah but yeah yeah that would be the easiest way <laughs> but honestly it's still a tough lily <laughs> Think, uh, the only problem here is getting this this reload the the true data that we can cross reference to because no one trusts the ministry of health <laughs> probably maybe who is just like i don't know where the true information is that is the only problem here that's a Unless if you want to be a human rights activist or an opposition leader, um, <laughs> I think you need to, okay, honestly, um, by the way, when we do data science, they are political, social, cultural, there are so many issues. So um, you might expose something that might land you in trouble or you might, I don't know. Honestly, I think this is where now uh, uh, people who are into the real business uh, doing data science can advise accordingly in terms of political, social, economic, all those things, repercussions. Yeah, uh, but you see, in this in this space, there is there is so much within our space and within our reach uh, that we can play around with. For instance, yeah. what what uh, what Martin has, what Martin has proposed. We just grab some data and we, we label it by ourselves and then we say this is a year for atta atta kama missy daktari ama missy si pani community of health in wongo a year pa ina kaukweli so it's just for fun and in the process yeah, you're doing what you're learning you get yeah, yeah sure. so another 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 scenario is um how 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 is the conversation um across the day i'm so sure so many people have been interested in that visualization where you're just you're just visualizing uh, between eight and ten, guys are guys are really saying positive things about Corona. For instance, kama inge kwa Corona, singe um, kwa I wouldn't be living within my means. Uh, before Corona, I was I was on loans. Mingi, so I in loans because I don't spend. I, I mean, there are people who have a lot of positive things to say about Corona, but the same same way, there are people who have a lot of negative things to say about Corona. Yeah, Giving sure. that insights to the public is, is something very, very interesting. For instance, when I say, hey, he corona na faiyishe, ni menona, I'm double my size. You get it. So, uh, such visuals, as you struggle to do such visuals, you're learning, and you're learning a lot, and it's just for fun. So if one day someone seated somewhere in a, in a certain blue chip company, might just get your visuals and say, hey, okay, this is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get your job, okay? So I, I think we've, we've, we've started um, well. Uh, I, I wanted to mention, uh, um, this is, this is uh, the beginning for NLP and I would really, really recommend uh, Eunice and Brian to provide as much info as you can in terms of research and every other person to have uh, a lot of questions as possible. And we continue sharing this knowledge and um, we time box um, some of these things that we do. I always like time boxing every two weeks. Uh, so it is up to Eunice and Brian to tell us uh, when next uh, we expect to hear from them. And if there is need uh, to, to slot in something, but I would really, really prefer that 
now that we've started this, uh, the people who have no idea where to start from, uh, watch out the videos for NLP, and then let this start start with the with this class because we will walk all the way to do what to do a model. So uh, I would really really prefer that um, nothing comes in between this and. Uh, uh, between, in between your path, because if we introduce any other thing within the NLP path, it will bring a lot of confusion. So I'm thinking that if we take sentiment analysis as the context within which we will learn and build a model all the way, we stick to that. So uh, Eunice and uh, Brian, please advise when next you would want to have a class. Uh, it shouldn't go beyond two weeks because I would want us to, to track ourselves. Let's not forget about stuff. So every two weeks, we need to be making progress. Yeah. Uh, so let me speak for myself, then Eunice will speak, for, will speak for herself as well. So I think for me, if we have like the biweekly meetings or biweekly classes, that will be, that will be fine with me. So at least I have two weekends. Look, I have this weekend and the other weekend to do something, then yeah, okay. that will be okay. Yeah. Right. Eunice? Brian says yeah, that he's speaking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, what is on a code? <laughs> uh, Brian, Brian, and I need to say so. <laughs> So uh, I think it's a good idea, like we just keep the pace so that we don't lose people in the middle. Mm. So just as we have started, I just think that we should just proceed. But mm. also I was thinking, uh, right now we're, going, we're just going to uh, put our, our, our notebook in a format that is shareable so that everybody can be with us, they can practice. And then we will we will work we will work on our model so that the next time we share what we have. But I was thinking uh, for the next week for next week um, we could have somebody else talk about NLP, not 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 getting to the model also so that they can take a different approach so that it's 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 easy for other people to also understand those maybe who did not understand today so that in two weeks. The other Wednesday, not this coming, the other one, we will maybe have our session. Perfect. Okay. Uh, actually, you read my mind. That's fine. That's, that's completely in order. So what okay. I can do, is since um, for, uh, for those guys who've started, so we'll be having um, classes, but now all, all of these classes, all, all of these sessions will build up to um, we'll build up to the model that we want to, to, to do uh, for sentiment analysis. So next weekend, next week on Wednesday, I'll run this session. And what I'm proposing to do is just to, 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 to expound on some of the concepts that have been shared here. Why do we have, uh, why do we have uh, jacket similarity explained? Um, how do you do? basics so i'll walk through and un unpack some of the concepts that have been uh, highlighted in this session put them together in a, in a digestible format so that those people who might have missed one or two concepts would get it in the next class and those guys who will join us for the first time in in, in on wednesday next week they'll also be able to catch up and then after next week then you guys can can now pick it up the following week yeah, exactly. That will yes. uh, will work best. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think, uh, is there any other person with uh, anything to say? Uh, Nelly was, Nelly joined, she was supposed to introduce herself. Um, <laughs> Nelly, I would like to hear your voice and so are uh, the other people. Oh, yeah. I think Winnie, ah, so at Winnie. <laughs> I think you need to can stop sharing your script now. Oh, okay. yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, I think Nelly, Nelly, I'm a footer too. I'm a footer too. Anyway, is there anyone else who had not introduced themselves? Because uh, before we wrap up, it's good to just. Uh, 
say something one or two and feel feel at home maybe a general comment is that thank you guys thank you so much thank you for the many questions they've really opened our eyes and our minds all of us are learning here so these questions are really 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 important yeah okay um martin martin are you okay uh, oh yeah, martin uh, martin i'm on yeah Okay, Silas. How many macar prints? I sit down and watch. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you very much, Eunice. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, share what you can. This recording is going to be available, and um, I, I I don't normally edit recordings. It is as it is. You you you. you I hope no one minds that. Um, it's a class. It's just the way you can go and play football outside there or play soccer. You learn from it and you move forward. So I don't edit. Next time, Rakarada. So uh, all this will be shared. And uh, yeah, I think today's session in Asia. Thank you. Thank you. Most welcome. See you guys. Enjoy your evening. Um, we we'll do this again on 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 Wednesday. Bye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Ayub, and bye. Karibu sana. Bye bye.